Hello and welcome to Class Class, where we have a class about a class. Today's topic is going to be Druids from the Pathfinder setting and D&D 3.0. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the show so far. Uh, we've only had, you know, one episode before this, which was Rogues, and you guys asked me, several of you asked me to do Druids next, so here we are. Um, so Druids, yeah, I've... You know, out of all the people that I've played D&D with, I've only ever seen two or three druids. Um, part of it is that, at least in my opinion, they're spellcasters, but they're also meleeers, but they're also a, uh, a quote-unquote pet class. So it becomes a jack-of-all-trades class, but a master of none. Like, if you want to tank with a druid, you can, but you'd be better doing it as a fighter or a paladin or a cleric. Um, if you want to have an animal companion, you can, but you might be better off with a ranger, depending on the build. Or, you know, if you want to do, you know, healing, you can. As a druid, they learn a lot of cure spells, just like clerics, but you'd be better off as a cleric. So, you know, druids are are almost preferential if you don't want to be the primary class. And I know, I'm not saying they're like a second-class citizen. I'm just saying because they can do so many things, you have to be very careful how you build them. Otherwise, you may as well just be the class that you're emulating. And, and yes, you know, it's, it's even the same in, in World of Warcraft. You can be a tank, a healer, or a damage, or a DPS as a druid, and wow, it'll just vary on your animal forms, but there's usually somebody better who's just another class who's more devoted to that particular job. But let's look here in, in these druids. There are three, just like rogues last time, there are three primary kinds of druid that I've, that I've run across again and again. And there are others, but just like the main three that I come across, that I come across, I thought I would, would go into. So let's look at druids. It says, uh, Within the purity of the elements and the order of the wilds lingers a power beyond the marvels of civilization. Furtive yet undeniable, these primal magics are guarded over by servants of philosophical balance known as druids. Allies to beasts and manipulators of nature, these often misunderstood protectors of the wild strive to shield their lands from all those who would threaten them and prove the might of the wilds to those who lock themselves behind city walls. Rewarded for their devotion with incredible powers, druids gain unparalleled shape-shifting abilities, the companionship of mighty beasts, and the power to call upon nature's wrath. The mightiest temper powers akin to storms, earthquakes, and volcanoes with the primeval wisdom long abandoned and forgotten by civilization. So yeah, that just that names off the three major druid types. The first type that I ran into... Uh, most of the time is the is what I call the Pokemon trainer druid, who is a druid who specializes in a spell called Summon Nature's Ally. And what they do is that they will basically summon an animal, or they'll have an animal companion with them at all times, and then they'll take up a bow or a throwing spear or something similar and let their animal, like, basically tank for them. And it's not a bad way to fight, it's just if you so choose, and I know that's a weird way to say it, a Pokemon trainer druid, but if you're using your animals to fight for you instead of yourself, that's kind of what it seems like to me. It's what my friends and I used to call it. Um, we had a we had a buddy who that was all he did. He would when a fight broke out, he would summon a creature and then stand back and he would kind of wait with a bow and arrow or he would wait with a throwing spear like if anybody tried to run away or run at him he would have a ranged weapon ready but he wouldn't run into melee himself I don't know if his character was cowardly or if he was cowardly or whatever he would just like let his animal do all the fighting the only problem I've noticed with the Pokemon trainer druid is that um, you get a big list because there's, you know, depending on your spell level, there's, you know, Summon Nature's Ally 1, Summon Nature's Ally 2, Summon Nature's Ally 3, and there's a list of creatures for each one. And it goes, you know, like, 
or maybe is it here? Yeah, they're animal choices. You know, you can get apes, badgers, bears, boars, birds, cats of varying sizes, crocodiles, dinosaurs, dogs, wolves, horses, you know, sharks, boa constrictors. There's all kinds of stuff. Anywhere, anywhere from a mount to an aerial thing to something that's just going to tear somebody's face off. Because there's so much choice to this, it kind of slows the game down a little because, you know, if a druid steps into battle and goes, summon nature's ally, I summon, you know, a celestial eagle, and the DM will look over and go, okay, do you have the stats for the celestial eagle with your character sheet? And he'll go, uh, no. So the game has to stop and the DM has to turn around, you know, or lean over next to him and pull out the bestiary or pull out the monster manual and be like, Celestial Eagle, Celestial Eagle. Uh, here it is on page bloody blah, blah. Here, keep this in front of you. It stops the game. And it, it really breaks the flow of, of a battle that's starting up when it takes you, you know, two, two, three minutes to, to look up this random creature that the druid summoned. And, you know, does the druid control it? his or herself, does the DM have to control it because it's a wild animal, or does it just, does it obey like a Pokemon trainer? I'm sure there's a rule for it in here somewhere, but just, you have to worry about that, you have to worry, you know, you know, it's an animal, how many health does it have, what, what's its initiative, what's its, you know, hit, what abilities does it have, things like that. It's a great way to throw the game off, or at least to cause it to pause. So if you want to be a druid, um, it kind of becomes your extra responsibility. If you're going to be summoning a lot of nature's allies, you know, get into, you know, a, a PDF of, of the bestiary or the uh, monster manual or whatever it happens to be, whatever game you're playing, and look up the creatures that you plan on summoning, or even the ones you don't. Just, like, look at all your options, find all those creatures, and, like, either put them in, like, Microsoft Word or just, like, do do print screen or something like that. Get the stat blocks for them. And if you're feeling fancy, a piece of paper, a uh, uh, picture as well. And then just keep them with your character sheet. Get like a big, like a big business envelope or something. I don't have one with me. Get like a business envelope or something and be like, summon nature's ally. And then you pull out your envelope and you're like, uh, celestial eagle. And then you set it down in front of you, you know? And you can use like a quarter or a penny on the on the grid to represent your uh, your summoned nature's ally, or even something bigger like a like a pill bottle or a you know something like this. That's that's the two by two if you're summoning bigger creatures. Um, people will be very impressed that you know you're ready. You've got all your stuff. You don't need the bestiary or the monster man. You've got all your creatures in like your envelope or your. You know, you could be fancy and bring, like, a Rolodex. You know, this, these are my nature's allies. Flip, 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 flip. You know, Celestial Eagle. Bah. And, you know, here's my quarter, or here's my pog that's got an eagle or a bird on it. And then, you know, you close it and you put it away and you're done. You know, your DM and your, your fellow players will be so pleased with you. You have no idea how awkward it is for, for the DM to have to stop the game, look up an animal... You know, keep it to one side or keep it in front of you. Roll initiative. Try to remember what its abilities and attacks are. You know, who's in control of it directly, if anybody, and, you know, stuff like that. So if you're going to be the Pokemon trainer druid, have your Pokemons ready when you, when you sit down rather than letting somebody look them up because it just stops everything. Uh, as far as skills go, druids... What do they have in Pathfinder? It's like four plus intelligence modifier. So not a ton, but not bad, you know? Um, climb, craft, fly. Handle animal, obviously. Heal. Knowledge, geography, knowledge, nature. The, the Pokemon trainer, most, most of the druids just kind of run under the same couple of... Uh, the same couple of skills, you know? Knowledge, geography, knowledge, nature, handle animal you know, survival, and that's, those are like the primary ones, and if you want to put points in climb, or swim, or, you know, ride, or spellcraft, you can, but like the top three are just like those knowledges, and, um, 
handle animal because that's the core of any druid is being around animals and knowing about nature. So not as much not as much skill focused as the rogue was, more like what what uh tree of skills tree of uh, abilities that you're going for. Uh the second type of druid is the uh we we call them were druids because they wild shaped druids, that's what they were. The wild shaped druids are the ones that that can uh, take on the form of certain animals. And these are not like mutually exclusive. Like you can summon nature's ally and then turn into a bear. It's not going to be like you have to do this or this. I'm just saying like usually people focus on on one or the other and there and there are grand mixes to do that. But let's see what it says. At fourth level a druid gains the Ability to turn herself into any small or medium animal and back again once per day. Her options for new forms include all creatures with the animal type. This ability functions like the beast shape spell, except as noted. The effect lasts for one hour per druid level or until she changes back voluntarily. Changing form to animal or back is a standard action and does not provoke an attack of opportunity. The form chosen must be that of an animal with which the druid is familiar. So, you know, you're not going to turn into a dinosaur anytime soon. Uh, druid loses her ability to speak while in animal form because she is limited to the sounds that a normal, untrained animal can make. But she can communicate normally with other animals of the same general grouping. So if you're a bear, you can talk to other bears. Okay, cool. A druid can use this ability an additional time per day at six levels and every two levels thereafter, for a total of eight times per day at 18th level. At 20th level, a druid can use Wild Shape at will. As druids gain levels, this ability allows the druid to take on the form of larger and smaller animals, elementals, and plants. Each form expends one daily use of this ability regardless of the form taken. Uh, venom immunity. At ninth level, a druid gains immunity to all poisons. Thousand faces. At thirteenth level, a druid gains the ability to change her appearance at will, as if using the alter self spell, but only while in her, their normal form. Timeless body. After attaining fifteenth level, a druid no longer takes ability score penalties for aging and cannot be magically aged. Any penalty she may already incur, however, will remain in place. Bonus is still accrue, and the druid still dies of old age when her time is up. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, the wild shaped druids, and and there are there are there are always circumstances where I've seen you know druids, you know, I turn into a bear, rah. Or, you know, I turn into an eagle, or I turn, you know, it's almost like if the rogue can't open it, you can bash it down. Or if the acrobat can't reach it, you can fly up to it. Or, you know, if the lake really is that deep, you could turn into a fish or a shark or, or a squid or something and just go down and grab whatever it is that's in the water. Um, but most people use it for combat. Like, they'll keep elephant and bear and gorilla like, on hand with them. And you gain... What does it say? Uh, Druid gains the ability to turn back and forth. Do you take on that thing's stats? I imagine you do. If you turn into that animal, I imagine you would take on its stats instead of your own. Ex druids. A druid who ceases to revere nature changes to a prohibited alignment or teaches the druidic language to a non druid loses all spells and druid abilities, including her animal companion but not including her weapon, armor, and shield. She cannot thereafter gain levels as a druid until she has atoned. See the atonement spell. Okay. And you know, as we know, druids learn, like, the secret language. It's called Sylvan, which is, like, the, the, the language of, like, woodland creatures and, and birds and um, 
things like that. Or no, Sylvan is for woodland creatures, and then Druidic. A secret language known only to druids, which she learns upon becoming a first level druid. Druidic is a free language for a druid, that is, she knows it in addition to the regular allotment. Druids are forbidden to teach this language to non-druids. Druidic has its own alphabet. Huh. Just what we need. A druidish princess. <laughs> um... Nature sense. A druid gains plus two to na knowledge, nature, and survival. Woodland stride. They can go through undergrowth and other terrain like that without taking damage and at your normal speed. Trackless step. They don't... You can't track them by, like, normal means. If a ranger comes along, they can't track you. Um, resist nature's lure. A... At starting at 4th level, a druid gains plus 4 on saving throws against the spell-like and supernatural abilities of the fey. Okay. Okay, the, the third... The third type of druid that I hadn't talked about yet was... We called them Druids of the Storm, or Druids of the Sun and Storm, something like that. Which is a reference to D&D 4th Edition, where you could the two paths that they would give you in the in like the core book about druids was you could be a druid of the sun or a druid of the storm in terms of like controlling weather and things like that but um the third like branch of druidic powers is controlling the weather like literally where's the uh we can go back to to druid spells and things and yes there are yeah, druid spells. Let's see. Uh, and druids share a lot of spells. Like, there's a lot of overlap between uh, druids and clerics and druids and wizards. Because uh, they learn basic spells like, you know, detect magic, detect poison, light, mending, uh, read magic, resistance, things like that. Then they... There's things that, you know, are more appropriate, like Calm Animal, Charm Animal. You know, yeah, yeah. First level Druid spells has Cure Light Wounds, um, which is, you know, a cleric spell. Uh, let's see, Magic Fang. One natural weapon of subject creature gets a plus one on attack and damage. You know, it's plus one. Uh, Obscuring Mist is usually a wizard spell. Um... Speak with animals. Summon nature's ally one. Yeah, there's there's a summon nature's ally in every level of, of druid spells except for zero. So there's summon nature's ally one, summon nature's ally two. It goes all the way up to ten, I think, or nine, one of the two. Eventually you can like summon dragons and stuff, but you have to be really high level. Um uh, cats, yeah, there's there's all the uh all the regular buff spells like Cat's Grace, Owl's Wisdom, Bull Strength, Fog Cloud, Heat Metal. Make metal so hot it damages those who touch it. Reduce Animal. Shrinks one willing animal. Spider Climb. God damn it, Spider Climb. Summon the Swarm. Summons a swarm of bats, rats, or spiders. Yeah, fuck you in particular. I summon a swarm of spiders unto you. Yeah, here we go. Call lightning. Calls down lightning bolts. <laughs> Contagion. Infects a subject with a chosen disease. God, some of these are nasty. Plant growth. Grows vegetation. Where's all the weather stuff? Sleet storm. Hampers vision and movement. Speak with plants. You can talk to plants and plant creatures. I don't know what my local wildflowers would have to say. But I bet it'd be interesting. Water breathing. Where's all the fun weather stuff? Because I remember we had like... Oh yeah, here's ice storm. Hail deals 5d6 damage in a cylinder 40 feet across. Yeah. We had a druid who who, like, he, you could tell he wanted to be a fighter, but we were trying to get him to try a different class because 
he'd been a fighter for like three campaigns in a row and they were all basically the same damage dealing fighter. You know, he would just try to find the biggest weapon he could and that's all he wanted to do was hit stuff. So we tried to get him to be a druid so he could learn a little bit of magic and learn how like magic in the game worked. So he became a druid, carried around a scimitar, and would he would like throw ice storm all the time. He did not want to be a druid. Let's see. Baleful polymorph. Yeah, that's a that's a wizard spell as well. Transform subject into a harmless animal. Call lightning storm. As call lightning, but five d six damage per bolt. Cure critical wounds. That's a cleric spell. So you see, there's a lot of overlap. For uh, for druids, as far as wizards and clerics go, <laughs> unhallow designates a location as unholy. Wow, there's some really dark stuff in here. Uh, cure light wounds, mass. Find the path shows the most direct way to a location. Yeah, there's a good way to, to, to like shave days off of your travel. Fire seeds. Acorns and berries become grenades and bombs. Of course. Spell staff. Stores one spell in a wooden quarter staff. Control weather. Yeah, seventh level druid spell. Control weather changes the weather in a local area. Creeping doom. Swarms of centipedes attack at your command. Let's see. Sunbeam. Beam blinds and deals 46 damage. So what's the top end of druid spells? Cure Critical Wounds is a Cleric spell. It's, it, well, it says Cure Critical Wounds Mass, which is for many people. Elemental Swarm summons multiple elementals. Foresight, a Sixth Sense warns of impending danger. Regenerate, subjects severed limbs grow back and it cures up to 35 damage. Shape change. Transforms you into certain creatures and you can change forms once per round. How is that any different from your regular shape change? Hang on, I gotta look this one up. How is that any different? Um, shape change. The spell allows you to take the form of a variety of creatures. This can function as altar shelf, beast form, elemental body, form of the dragon, giant form, and plant shape, depending on the form you take. You can change form once per round as a free action. The change takes place either immediately before your regular action or immediately after it, but not during. Okay, so it just it gives you a slightly wider list of things to be. So yeah, druids. And druids don't, as far as like alignment and things like that goes, druids tend to be towards the neutral because, you know, they're part of nature. They're not supposed to... They're not supposed to be like ch out there changing the world more so to be keeping it in balance, whether for good or for evil. There are evil druids out there. You know, if somebody starts logging where they not ought to be, then yeah, all the forest cries out in fury, and one druid sends every mountain tiger from there to kingdom come into one spot to kill all the loggers, then yeah. Spontaneous casting. A druid can use summon nature's ally in order to cast... Oh, instead of casting a spell of the same level. So yeah, it's like a cleric and the cure spells. They can sub out their spells 
for some of nature's ally. And you don't have to be like, you know, vegan, save the forest, PETA kind of druid. You have, you, it's more like, it's almost like being a paladin, but instead of a god, you have like nature. And there are nature gods, but you know what I mean. You're, your, your priority is to lead by example rather than like pushing your beliefs on other people like a religion. You, you know, you make sure the campfire is put out. You make sure you're not like taking more from the fruit tree than you ought to be. You know, you, you know, if an animal is nearby, you know, there's, there's really no hunting for sport for you. You have to keep the balance as far as, you know, well, if you kill that animal, it's got, you know, fur, meat, tendon, bone try to use what you can kind of thing. Unless it just attacks you out of nowhere, then you don't have any choice. Stuff like that. It's it's more of a um, it's more of a mindset than some of the other classes. It's not quite as pretentious as a paladin can be. But um, I see fewer people playing them, if only because I don't know. It's it's a unique set of skills. You know, if, you're, if your campaign takes place in the middle of a city, well, you know, druids can't really do a lot other than read the moss on the side of the buildings or under the ground because, yeah, there's going to be, you know, pigeons and starlings and pets around, but, or, you know, horses, maybe, but there's not a whole lot of nature going on in the middle of the city. Or if most of your... Um, campaign takes place, you know, deep in the undermines or whatever. You know, it's more of a uh, out in the open world kind of class. So it's that might be part of it. Is if people don't know what kind of campaign it is, druids are kind of limited uh, as far as like their environment. You know, like where they would actually be, where they would actually go. You know, where you know animals are or are not appropriate. Like if you're out on the tundra, you know. It, you know, a penguin is not going to do really good as an animal companion. But, you know, a polar bear might. But, you know, who wants to run around with a camel, you know, unless that's just going to be your mount for the whole game. But, I don't know. It is, it, it, it's, it's a mixed bag becomes, because it comes with certain rules and it kind of creeps into other people's territory. It creeps into the cleric spells. It creeps into the, uh, the wizard spells. But, you know, you can summon other creatures, and eventually, like I said, you can summon dragons and elementals in the higher levels, which is really cool. Uh, not a whole ton else to say, really. You get, you know, you get more uses of wild shape as you level up. Yeah, what is their... Their base attack bonus is pretty constant, plus one, plus two, plus three, as they're going up the levels. Uh, their fortitude save and will save base, their their reflex stops at plus six, which is not that good, actually. You'd think a druid would have really good reflexes. Um, I guess that's all I really have to say about that. There's, so, you know, there's the Pokemon druid, or the Pokemon trainer druid, the wild shape druid, and the, uh, the Sun and Storm Druid. And, and again, there are variations of those. There's people that use all three. There's people that focus on one of the three. It's just, it's just food for thought as far as um, Druids kind of reach into all the categories. They can be a healer. They can be a damage dealer. And God knows they can be a tank. Oh, Druids can't use metallic armor. I don't know about weapons. But it does specifically say, most of the time in, in these tabletop games, that druids cannot wear, like, iron, steel, anything like that. They have to use, like, leather on down. They can't use chain mail. And they can use any kind of shield as long as it's not metallic. So there's no, they can't use tower shields. So you can potentially have a very good tanking druid, you know, who turns into a bear on occasion. And yes, their armor like shifts with them or it disappears with them it doesn't like ruin your clothes every time you shape shift though that would be kind of funny to just carry around tons of suits of clothes because you keep ruining them um but yeah jack of all trades really master of none because if you're building in a certain way 
most of the time you would almost rather be another class, but because you're a druid, you become you become something else entirely. It's just the nature of the beast. You can you can be anything out of the three, out of the uh, what is it, the Holy Trinity, but. I don't know. I feel like a bunch of the other classes can do it better. It's just that as a druid, you have more options. You can reach into wizard spells. You can reach into, you know, cleric spells. You can turn into a squirrel and crawl up the wall beyond the defenses of the enemy rather than trying to bash the door down. You have, you are of greater utility than any of the holy trinity in its purer form can be, so... I guess that's all I have to say about that. So make of that what you will. I hope you learned something cool about druids today, or if you might give them another look. Um, so I guess that's all for this episode of Class Class. Keep gaming.